Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Relief this Thanksgiving for more than 2,000 families. They actually had meals this holiday thanks to Meals on Wheels San Antonio. And our Jaffany Gray spoke with a client and volunteers who say they're beyond grateful. Feels great. We're really excited doing this. Because it's a pleasure of mine to give back to the community. What a better way to spend Thanksgiving. We do it every year. Around 300 carloads filled with volunteers in this parking lot on Centerview on a mission to deliver over 2,000 warm Thanksgiving meals to families in need. Volunteers have been out in the rain and the brisk and sometimes sprinkles already, but we're having a great day. Different volunteers with different reasons for serving. We're doing this in honor of my grandmother, uh, who used to do Meals on Wheels all the time. I feel like our elder, elderly people get neglected, so I just feel like this is a major gift to give back. Meals on Wheels. 73-year-old Constance King Meredith is one of the you? thousands Happy of clients receiving a Thanksgiving meal doing? this year from Meals on Wheels. Rain or shine, y'all are here. She, like many, depends on Meals on Wheels San Antonio to have food on her table. It's hard to cook for one. Plus, I burn the food now. I don't know. I just don't concentrate. I know know them if they're late. I always call to find out what's going on. For her, it's more than a meal. At least somebody to talk to, because lots of times there's no one to talk. I talk to the TV. <laughs> For three years, Meredith has been living alone. It's not easy, but I, I try. I do the best I can. She says the best thing anyone in her same shoes can do is to stay positive because there is always something to be thankful for. Thankful when I open my eyes this morning that God has allowed me to see another Thanksgiving. I don't want to be crying on camera, but I am thankful because I have a meal. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Wow, I love that. So now let's keep the gratitude coming because Military City USA just welcomed back a Thanksgiving tradition. It's called Operation Home Cooking. You know, it was canceled last year because of the pandemic, but this year only 300 homes were able to sponsor trainees. It scaled back, but everyone was still plenty grateful. More than 800 trainees from the Lackland Air Force Base got warm meals and their hosts were pretty happy too. So I want to keep talking to them and feeding them and, and you know, just talking with them because they're just great people and they have their whole world ahead of them. Now, Operation Home Cooking began in 1975 and it's focused solely on basic military trainees. Now, staying with the Thanksgiving theme, this has been a really long week for the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner. Volunteers spent a lot of time preparing these meals and between yesterday and today, they handed out about 12,000 meals for the holiday. Jonathan Cotto shows us what it took to make that happen. Turkey, gravy, green beans, and of course, stuffing. All the essential fixings of a traditional Thanksgiving meal. Today, the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner in full swing and in service to others. An annual Thanksgiving tradition that's placed an emphasis on giving for the last 42 years. Just being able to give back to the community, um, especially working downtown, you see a lot of homeless and people in need. So it's good to be able to drive away from work today knowing that we actually fed everybody down here today. This annual dinner typically is hosted in person and gathers thousands of folks across San Antonio under one roof to break bread. The pandemic causing some changes to the tradition, but staff say those changes have been a blessing. The thing that I like about this year and last year is that a lot of people aren't able to physically get here. So I feel that the only bright side of the pandemic is that they had the opportunity to get those meals instead of not physically being able to come down to the convention centers. I have to tell you folks, the staff and volunteers in this kitchen this morning are running an effective and efficient assembly line, packing thousands of hot meals for folks across the community. And that's an operation successfully executed with the help of over 300 volunteers. The Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner was first established in 1979 in an effort of ensuring senior citizens and those who can't afford to prepare a dinner were not forgotten. A selfless call to action made by Raul Jimenez himself nearly four decades ago. I think he'd be looking down on us. Back he passed in 1998, and I think every year since then, he's been looking down saying, you know, these guys got it together. They got the heart, and we got the community support, and it's amazing what happens when the community comes together. And in the spirit of giving thanks, only one thing can be said. We just want to say thank you and how grateful we are. And um, I mean, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, keep shining your light brightly. 
Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Now to developing news, San Antonio police investigating a shooting on the city's west side. It happened before midnight at a home on Sunnyland Drive near Bandera Road. According to SAPD, a woman and her boyfriend were at that home when her ex-boyfriend showed up to the house. Investigators say that someone in that group out of the three pulled out a gun. The woman's boyfriend, current boyfriend that is, got shot in the leg. At this point, police have not arrested anyone just yet. Now to Kendall County, where the owner of a bed and breakfast is facing several charges for allegedly videotaping his guests. The Kendall County Sheriff's Office says that Jay Ali is being charged with four counts of invasing video recording. The Sheriff's Office says that he operates a rental cabin in comfort called Cielito Lindo. Back in July, a guest found a hidden camera in the master bedroom. Investigators believe that he had spent a year, an entire year, secretly recording people. Investigators are telling anybody who stayed there to call them, and their number is 830-331-8836. It's a mystery. San Antonio police are trying to figure out how a truck crashed into a home on the city's southwest side. Happened around 3 this morning in the 2800 block of Gerald Avenue. Officers say that a pickup truck crashed into the front of a home, smashing the front wall of the house, and police say that the vehicle may have been stolen. All right, let's take things outside right now. A beautiful look here at our San Antonio skyline. 58 degrees. My, my, how we've seen changes on this oh. Thanksgiving. We even had some rain earlier, Katie. Yes, very early this morning. Most of the day was dry. That's good news. And most of the day was pretty cool as well. But it's been a kind of topsy-turvy day for temperatures. Here's the almanac for San Antonio. Our high today was 71, the low was 55, but this is really deceiving. We need a little bit of context here. That high of 71 was in the three o'clock hour this morning before the cold front arrived. And then we dropped down to 55 in the nine o'clock hour after the front and that cold front managed to squeeze out a little bit less than a half inch of rain at the airport, but not everyone was so fortunate. A quick look at rainfall totals around the metro, a little bit more than a quarter inch of rain in Hondo, but in Seguin, you did pretty good, a little less than an inch. If you would like a little more rain, we get a break tomorrow and then rain chances pick back up Friday night and Saturday. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Stephanie. Yes. Really matters where we're getting the rain. All right. Thank you so much, Katie. In other news, a Paralympic champion is extra grateful on this Thanksgiving. Mohamed Mirbat Zai was a star player on the national wheelchair basketball team in Afghanistan. But now he's starting a new life in San Antonio as the newest player with the San Antonio Wheelchair Spurs. Jesse de Goyado has a story. I go. Help! Even at practice, the San Antonio Wheelchair Spurs play for real. And now with number four out there. He's coming in from being an international basketball player, so he's going to add a lot to the team. An international Paralympic champion in Afghanistan, Mohammed Bilal Mirbat Zai, played on a team sponsored by the International Committee for the Red Cross. That is, until the Taliban took over and the chaos that ensued. The day after the suicide bombings, Mohammed, his wife, and his colleagues waited outside the Kabul airport, fearing another explosion. Everyone was thinking like this end of the world. So he had no choice but to abandon his custom-fitted wheelchair. Impressive though he may be, imagine if he had that specialized wheelchair he had to leave behind. With that wheelchair, I'm very good. And I can go fast. Not only is this wheelchair too large and too high, he says it can be painful to maneuver. So when I take wheels like this, this will hurting me and also here because I have to push. There we go. Reverse it. Given his go. newest player has experienced what no American has, his coach says the team is trying to raise the six to seven thousand dollars he needs for a better wheelchair. And if we can get help in the community, we greatly welcome it. Yeah. Like his teammates playing wheelchair basketball. I feel like I'm complete. For an added sense of freedom in his adopted country. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. All right, now coming up, back to normal. The annual Thanksgiving Day Parade looked like it did before the pandemic. We're going to take you to New York City right after the break.
name's Priscilla Caraman, and this year I'm especially thankful for my family coming out of a pandemic. I'm glad that we're almost nearing the end. I'm thankful for everyone in my life, and I just want to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. My name is Alyssa. I'm the producer of KSAT News Now, and this year I got married, so I am thankful that I was able to have all my loved ones at my wedding. Luckily, it was when COVID calmed down a little bit. And I am also thankful that this will be our first year hosting Thanksgiving in our first home. Hi, my name is Alexis Page. I am thankful for uh, my family, my friends that I consider family. Thankful for puppies, you know, uh, really good food, pie. I'm very thankful for pie, especially on Thanksgiving. Um, and I'm thankful for vaccines, so. That's about it. Happy Thanksgiving. A pickup truck came crashing into a home on the southwest side early this morning. Tonight on the Night Beat, we speak to the homeowner who says this is unfortunate, but now he has one more thing to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. Plus, it's been tough for some restaurants in San Antonio, so some are shifting gears during the holidays. What to expect the next time you dine out? Also, a local family that's faced the biggest challenge of their lives is extra grateful this Thanksgiving. Their three-year-old is battling cancer. You're going to hear their message and get an update on little Amy on the night beat. After a scaled down celebration with no crowds last year, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade returned to New York with full force. Karen Kaifa was there for all of the sights and sounds and she takes you there right now. A beautiful Thanksgiving Day in New York City and a beautiful day for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade to return to full form. After last year's parade, which was largely made for television and for virtual consumption, the crowds returned in a big way this Thanksgiving morning. Ten marching bands, including the University of Alabama, went through this parade route, 2.5 miles of it from the west side of Manhattan here in the upper west 70s all the way down to the iconic Macy's flagship store on 34th Street. And of course, capping off the parade to usher in the holiday season in New York City, the big man himself, Santa Claus. It's been a great day, not just for Santa and the marching bands, but also for the 15 giant balloons. A lot of the time we talk about the wind being a factor and those balloons not being able to fly high very light winds here and also very comfortable temperatures for the 2.5 million people that Macy's expected would come out to line the streets. Obviously, a great deal of vigilance by New York City officials and the NYPD to keep the crowd safe here. New York City last year obviously couldn't hold these kinds of large scale holiday events. They are returning to that and that was why it was important. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio and the NYPD said to make sure this event stayed safe. So we've seen a number of uniformed officers, plain clothes officers, all kinds of precautions through this parade route to make sure that the crowd stayed safe. In terms of the temperatures here today, the really diehard folks who wanted a prime spot on the sidewalk showed up around 5 a.m. this morning, four hours before parade time. Temperatures were in the 30s. By the time Santa makes his way all the way to the Macy's department store, it'll be in the 50s. Obviously, lots of sun and lots of good spirits for what is a very important return to a somewhat normal holiday season here in New York City after a very tough year last year in 2020. In New York this Thanksgiving, I'm Karen Kafa. All right, now let's take it back home where we had, well, we had a lot going on today in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. 58 degrees right now. You're getting a live look there at 410 where obviously not too many people are on the road no. right now. If they were <laughs> out earlier today, boy, did they have a lot to deal with. Yeah, I know we had a big thing, a lot of things. A lot of people like to do the turkey trot in the morning. Yes. It wasn't the ideal morning for that here locally, but thankfully things improved as the morning went on and this afternoon rain free, but then the winds started to pick up. Winds will relax overnight and we're in store for a cool but comfortable day tomorrow. Temperatures currently starting to fall into the 50s in and around San Antonio and Bear County. We're mid 60s well to the south 65 in Catula. 
low to mid 50s up across a portion of the hill country. Speaking of NYC, they're still in the 50s. Currently it's 54 in New York City, 50 in Washington, D.C. We've got a nice uh, little cold air mass here coming out of Canada through a portion of Minnesota across the Great Lakes. It's currently 30 in Chicago, 29 in Omaha, 40s up in Oklahoma, and then uh, a little bit more balmy in our part of the country. Again, we're just shy of 60 here at the airport in San Antonio. So a front is sweeping across a good portion of the country. Currently the same front that came through this morning. The really cold air mass, though, closer to the surface low that will stay off to our north. So it will be cool tomorrow, but a big reason for that uh, or it'll be staying cool tomorrow. And a big reason for that is because we're going to keep a good amount of cloud cover around. So there's our low pressure system in the cold front that came through earlier today. All the rain associated with that cold front is down near the Texas Gulf Coast and will continue to fizzle out overnight. So dry overnight and through the day on Friday. But our next chance of rain is right around the corner. In fact, it will kick in tomorrow night and into the day on Saturday. We've got a rainmaker moving in from the west. This is a cut off low pressure system. It's basically just a piece of rain making energy that's sitting off to our west. But as we get into Friday night and Saturday, it will inch closer and closer to Texas. And even by the pre dawn hours of Saturday morning, this will be tossing us some scattered, very light rain. That rain is expected to continue into a good portion of the day, Saturday ending Saturday evening, Saturday night, and that will leave us with a great day on Sunday. So let's bring it back in a little closer and talk more about these rain chances that will kick in tomorrow. So through the day on Friday, a lot a lot of cloud cover. It will feel like a pretty gray day tomorrow, but no rain comfortable with low humidity and light winds. But as we get past midnight tomorrow into the pre dawn hours of Saturday, that rainmaker will be moving into West Texas and that will start to toss us some rain. This is going to be very light rain because our air is still going to be a bit dry. The humidity will have not had time to surge back in. So a lot of this rain that will fall as we get into very late Friday night, early Saturday, and then even throughout the day on Saturday is going to be pretty light. I still think it could be a bit of a nuisance, especially because it's likely to hang around into the afternoon hours, not really clearing up until Saturday evening, and then we've got a great day on Sunday. So just factor that into your plans over the next few days. If you've got family, friends in town and you want to get out and about Saturday, is really not the most ideal day. If you have things you can do at home indoors, Saturday may be the day to do that. Tomorrow, cloudy, but no rain, and then more improvement on Sunday with more sunshine. And it'll be a little warmer, but still cool with highs in the 60s. So currently, we've still got a lot of cloud cover out there, a few breaks here or there. I expect our skies to stay mostly cloudy overnight through the first part of the day tomorrow morning. Still a little breezy behind this morning's front north winds are about 10 to 20 miles per hour, and that's where they'll stay for the next few hours. They will start to let up overnight and by early tomorrow morning, up certainly by midday tomorrow, our winds will be closer to 5 to 10 miles per hour. So a lighter wind for your Friday low humidity, but unseasonably cool because of the clouds that will keep around through a good portion of the day. So if you've got plans outside tomorrow, you won't have issues with rain, but you will want to keep a jacket or a sweater handy because it'll be staying pretty chilly. Those showers, light rain showers kick in Friday night, continue through a good portion of the day Saturday, and then big improvement by Sunday will warm up a little bit and warm up even more heading into the middle part of next week. Highs will be back in the 70s before you know it. Stephanie. All right, Katie, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Greg Simmons here on the set with us. So, all right, we're going to talk about the road runners. They sure. have a chance here to really perfect the way that they finish the season because they've had an amazing season. Yeah, this has already been an historic season in uh -huh. road runner football history. Yeah. What would it be and mean to this team to finish a perfect 12 and 0 when we come back? The preparations are underway as we speak. We'll hear from the team and also the money they're raising to help UTSA students see the conference game for free. And Central Catholic just one win away from a state championship game coming up. The UTSA Roadrunners have a chance to close out their remarkable season undefeated when they face the mean green of North Texas this Saturday in Denton. They've already made it to 11 and 0 in just Jeff Trailer's second season as a Roadrunners head coach. Have a chance to finish with a perfect 12 and 0 season this weekend. The mean green, on the other hand, need one more win to become bowl eligible after winning their last four straight games. This is the ninth meeting between these two teams with a series tied at four wins apiece, with North Texas holding a three to one edge in Denton, where the Roadrunners lone win there back in 2013. They're trying to ruin ours. Uh, we we trying to go 12 and 0, and uh, we don't we don't want to be an 11 and 1. So 
uh, we we trying to just go 12 and 0. We know they're going to come out and play hard, just, uh, just because, like you said, their season is on the line, and uh, who would want to go play in a bowl game? But uh, like I said, for us to uh, for us to you know what I'm saying do what we want to do, we have to just keep going day by day. We got to uh, stick to the root, and I feel like we're doing that. We're, we had a good day today. We had a good day yesterday, and I feel like one more good day, just build a solid week together. All right, while the Roadrunner football team is focused on North Texas, the San Antonio business community led by April and Sarah have been raising money to pay for UTSA student tickets for the Conference USA Championship game in the Alamo Dome on Friday, December the 3rd, wanting to orange out the dome with as many students as possible to thank them for their support this season. And so far, over $93,000 has been raised, according to April. It's one of the main reasons I stayed. It's just I, I had a strong belief in this city and uh, our boosters. And there's just so many of them. And I'm going to name April's name because she's kind of the one that started it, right? But I knew so many of them would jump on. And uh, they take care of our students. And it's a special place. But first, North Texas kickoff Saturday in Denton is set for 1 p.m. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. The Texas Longhorns will put a cap on a frustrating and disappointing season tomorrow when they host Kansas State in their final regular season game at Royal Memorial Stadium. The Longhorns come into this game with a 4-7 and seven record. They're just 2-6 and six in the Big 12, riding a six-game losing streak and not bowl eligible. Their latest loss on the road to West Virginia, 31-23, where both quarterbacks were injured as it stands right now. Casey Thompson will start tomorrow morning with Hudson Card, a game-time decision. That said, head coach Steve Sarkeesian believes the quarterback position will be up for grabs as soon as this season is over. I think that we have to open that job up. I think we have to let these guys compete um, to see the development. We're going we're gonna to tear this thing all the way down, and we're going to start back at square one come winter conditioning and then into spring ball. Kickoff tomorrow against K-State is set for 11 a.m. The Central Catholic Buttons are in the Taps Division I state semifinals and they face Midland Christian this Saturday night in Brownwood. The Buttons go into this game with a 9-2 overall record with only two losses to undefeated Alamo Heights in week three of the season, 35-20, and their only district loss to Antonian, 44-35 in their last regular season game before the playoffs began. And after a 38-28 victory over Fort Worth All Saints to win the region, now they're just one win away from playing in the state championship game. This is a great season we've played so far. Um... We're doing our thing. We're climbing the mountain still. We have a good game ahead of us um, versus Midland Christian. They're a very good team. Um, they just come off a great win versus Northern Catholic. And we know they're a very physical, good team, but we believe they're a good team too. And we're looking forward to that matchup. All right, kickoff in Brownwood between Central Catholic and Midland Christian set for 6 p.m. It's one of the games you can watch on the BGC app this weekend. Also, coming up tonight in the night, we find out if the Cowboys can come back and win this game today. Our Larry Ramirez is there. You have the full report for us. All right, good stuff, Greg. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. With Thanksgiving activities in full swing, Americans are celebrating a return towards normalcy. But the CDC is warning about a rise in COVID cases and hospitalizations. It says that 8,000 more people could die by mid-December. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more now from Washington. This Thanksgiving, a welcome return to pre-pandemic traditions. Crowds lining the streets of New York City, cheering the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Everyone's masked, unvaccinated, we feel safe, and it's great to have started to get things back. But amid the celebrations, a concerning trend in COVID infections and hospitalizations. Daily new COVID cases are rising by 10% or more in 35 states, with hospital admissions climbing in nearly half of the country. We have a half dozen ICU patients that are waiting for beds and don't have beds for them yet. In hard hit states like Michigan and Minnesota, governors are turning to federal staff to help ease overburdened hospitals. I asked point blank, you've been at this for 20 months, how does it feel now? And without a doubt, every one of them said it's worse now than it's been. Top health officials say unvaccinated Americans are the main factor behind the rise in cases and hospitalizations. Also to blame, increased travel, looser restrictions, colder weather causing people to gather indoors, and waning protection from the vaccine. Dr. Anthony Fauci on CNN urging unvaccinated Americans to get their shots and telling those who are vaccinated to get boosted. The data that we're getting is extremely encouraging that the protection that you begin to lose as the months go by is dramatically enhanced by boosters. 
If you're spending time with family or friends who are unvaccinated or immunocompromised, the CDC recommends wearing a mask, getting tested, and considering gathering outdoors. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Tonight, the family of Ahmad Arbery speaking out after a jury convicted three men for killing him. The video showing the final moments of Arbery's life sparked outrage across the country last year. We all remember that. The three men charged in his death face life in prison now. And Arbery's mother says that she's finally getting some closure. I said to myself, we finally got justice for Ahmad. We finally got this. And I was very, very thankful, very excited. I mean, I was just really no words to really to explain all of the emotions that I was going through at that time. So now the judge in this case is going to decide whether the three men will get parole with their life sentences. Thanksgiving travelers across the U.S. are flying in record numbers. The Transportation Security Administration says it screened 2.3 million people at U.S. airports yesterday, which makes it the busiest day at security checkpoints since March of 2020. And listen to this. The TSA is expecting it to get even busier. It's expecting more than 20 million people at airports for the rest of the holiday. Now, a Broadway actor has joined the list of people charged for participating in the U.S. Capitol riot. James Beeks of Florida now charged with obstruction of Congress and unlawfully entering Capitol grounds. According to court documents, the 49-year-old plays Judas in a national tour of the musical Jesus Christ Superstar. Court documents also state that once inside the Capitol building, Beeks worked with a group that was attempting to break a line of police officers that were guarding a hallway to the Senate chamber. Beeks has been suspended indefinitely from the cast pending the outcome of the investigation. So the post-Thanksgiving holiday shopping spree already underway. Believe it or not, more people are starting their shopping earlier this year. And the National Retail Federation, Amazon, and experts all are predicting a record-breaking shopping season. Jen Sullivan takes a closer look. A bigger and earlier Black Friday shopping frenzy. According to the National Retail Federation, nearly 2 million more people than last year will shop from Thanksgiving Day through Cyber Monday. We almost think of Thanksgiving now as the halfway point rather than the kickoff. A survey from the NRF finds many shoppers started holiday shopping early, citing concerns about supply chain issues, inventory, and high demand. Almost half of shoppers started browsing and buying before November this year. Uh, for reference, that's up from 42% last year. And shoppers are expected to spend a record amount. The NRF says consumers may spend an average of about $1,000 this holiday season. One of the largest online retailers, Amazon, is also expecting big numbers. Black Friday and Cyber Monday have always been big days for Amazon. So we think this year is going to be even bigger. Experts say higher consumer confidence means more people will be likely hitting the stores in person. On Black Friday, the NRF survey found 64% are likely to shop in stores. That's up from 51% last year when COVID-19 worries kept many people at home. People like going to stores when they're buying gifts. They like to touch and feel product, see it. And for many people hitting the mall this weekend, experts say the day after Thanksgiving could be more like bleak Friday. With some products hard to find and prices rising. The best tip, if you see what you want, buy it now. Buy it. Definitely buy it now. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Still ahead this evening, Old Spice and secret body sprays being recalled, and we're going to tell you why that is after the break. Don't go away. Recall alert. Several popular body sprays are being recalled because of concerns about a possible cancer-causing chemical. Procter & Gamble is voluntarily recalling 18 versions of its Old Spice and secret antiperspirants. The FDA says that the products may contain benzene, which is a human carcinogen. Exposure to that contaminant has been known to lead to cancers like leukemia and blood cancer of the bone marrow. The company has not received any reports of adverse side effects from those products, but instead what they're saying is that customers should get in touch with Old Spice and Secret through their websites in order to get their money back. 
Now, quick reminder, there's still time to donate a new pairs of shoes to our Save, Share the Shoes drive. About 400 pairs of shoes have been donated, but we all know there's an endless amount of children who need them. And you could drop off a new pair of shoes to any San Antonio Police Department substation. We're looking for shoes of all sizes for toddlers through teenagers, and all of those shoes will eventually benefit the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services next month just in time for the holidays. And by the way, we're taking donations through November 30th. So what, you've got five days. You know what, tomorrow or any Black Friday shopping you're doing, it's a great opportunity if you're That's shopping for shoes yep. for someone else. If you can, drop an extra pair in your cart and drop them off. That would be greatly appreciated. Out there now, sun has gone down, it's dark. We've still got a lot of clouds, but it is cool and crisp. Our temperatures took a tumble today behind this morning's front. Humidity dropped a lot as well, and we are in store for another cool um, and crisp day tomorrow. Now, we will hold on to a lot of clouds on Friday, so if you'll be out and about doing some shopping, even if you're at home, things will look pretty gray tomorrow, and that'll keep our temperatures in the 50s for much of the day. We'll get close to 60, but temperatures will have a hard time rising on Friday. No rain tomorrow for any shopping you may be doing, but rain does return late tomorrow night and Saturday. We'll talk more about that forecast coming up shortly. Everybody, I'm RJ Marcus. I am a reporter for KSAT 12 and also the co-host for our new streaming show, KSAT News Now. So a couple of things I'm thankful for, of course, just uh, family, friends, loved ones. Uh, my amazing wife who took me to a Minnesota Vikings game for the first time ever. It was definitely on my bucket list, so I was very thankful for her and she's been amazing throughout all of COVID and everything that we've all gone through. So I think the thing that stands out to me, besides the fact that obviously a lot of us are getting together, being able to see family, again are just these little traditional things. Um, I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I do remember growing up seeing all my family and going to watch the Cowboys games with all my family and friends, also going to this little small parade in El Paso. So I think it's those little traditional things that I've missed the most over these past two years as everyone has tried to, you know, get past the pandemic. So again, thankful for everything, thankful for good health, and again, good family, friends, loved ones, coworkers here at KSAT 12. Hope you guys have a great, great Thanksgiving and enjoy yourselves, eat a lot of food, and just, um, and just enjoy the experience of being around the people that we love once again. You know, some people might not be so thankful there for the cost of their Thanksgiving meal. It's about 14% higher than last year. That's according to the American Farm Bureau's annual survey. The cost of the turkey alone, up 24%. The government, though, offering a rosier perspective than the Farm Bureau. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says that Americans are spending 5% more on Thanksgiving meals. Maybe it's somewhere in between. Now, this could be the last Black Friday ever for two of America's most famous retail brands. We're talking about Sears and Kmart. Those two historic brands merged in 2005. There were 3,500 stores nationwide, but now you'll only find 21 full-time Sears stores left in the mainland U.S. and just six Kmarts. Crazy, right? Retail experts predict those numbers are going to be down to zero soon, but the big box retailers not alone because Lord & Taylor completely folded during the pandemic and JCPenney was forced into bankruptcy. So Collins Dictionary picked its word of the year and it's NFT. Yeah, those can be artworks or collectibles that have unique digital certificates ensuring their value and authenticity. In March, an NFT artwork named Every Day's The First 5,000 Days sold for $69 million at Christie's. That's $69 billion. Do you believe that? All right. NFT narrowly edged out crypto as the word of the year, and that's crypto as in cryptocurrency like, you know, Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. That's All cool. right. 6.45 right now. Let's walk you through Black Friday. You know, a lot of people are going to be getting up super early tomorrow, Katie. To I, go out shopping. Yeah, how are you doing on your shopping? I'm good. I did a lot of it online, and I'm going to okay. do Small Business Saturday, and that's how I'm going to even everything out. Wonderful. I have done nothing. Oh. I feel very behind. Oh, no. Get <laughs> I keep it. getting these emails <laughs> like, the sale has started. I'm like, I know I'll get there eventually. I feel very behind. So I've got a lot of a ground to make up here. And whether you are staying in or going out tomorrow, 
no big weather issues on Friday. Before we talk about tomorrow, let's take another look back at today. We'll start today's time lapse at 6 a.m. That's about when our front was approaching a couple hours before the front actually moved through and we did have some rain around. You'll see that moisture there on the camera lens as a broken line of showers and storms moved on through. After that, a windy day at times and we held on to a lot of cloud cover and cloud cover is going to be fairly consistent tonight throughout the day tomorrow and really I don't think we see a lot of sunshine until the end of the weekend Sunday into early next week. So the cloud cover will be hanging around that broken line of showers early today gave the airport a little bit less than a half inch of rain, but rain was really, really spotty. Not everyone got that much rain. Unfortunately, things are really starting to quiet down all across South Central Texas, even deep South Texas tonight. There was a little bit of lingering rain late this afternoon, early this evening from Corpus Christi up to about Victoria, the middle Texas coast there. Even that is starting to fizzle out, but cloud cover is pretty extensive across the area. It's 59 in New Braunfels, 51 in Kerrville, 64 Del Rio and 65 in Catula. Our wind speed still a touch breezy here in San Antonio, Hondo, New Braunfels, between about 10 and 20 miles per hour. Elsewhere, they were a touch lighter, and generally speaking, the trend overnight will be that our winds will gradually start to relax. Our wind speeds will drop. Wind gusts have essentially fallen off the board. At 5 o'clock, we were picking up gusts still closer to about 30 miles per hour, but wind gusts have really fallen off, so it shouldn't be too gusty at all tonight or overnight. Dew points. Measure of humidity, measure of moisture in the air. These numbers are down a lot. They're anywhere from the 40s, closer to the coast, to the 30s, even some 20s in the hill country. That's feeling very dry. And look, compared to this time yesterday, 24 hours ago, our dew point here in San Antonio is down 32 degrees. It's down 26 degrees in Kerrville. You get the picture, a big drop in humidity behind the front that came through this morning. Also drop in temperatures as well. So as we head into the overnight hours, staying cloudy, we are going to continue to see some high and mid-level clouds stream in from the west. So generally speaking, things will stay cloudy overnight through first part of the day Friday. I can't rule out a few peaks of sun here or there, but It'll be mainly gray on your Friday temperature rise in the morning. If you'll be out early, a lot of us in the 40s, low to mid 40s, some mid to upper 30s in the hill country. Still a little breezy early on Friday with winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. But into the afternoon, they'll relax to 5 to 10 miles per hour. But notice we still have a lot of cloud cover around. And I think even if we see a few peaks of sun early in the day, things will become completely overcast again as we get into Friday afternoon and Friday evening. Uh, 59 are high temperature tomorrow, some low 60s, upper 50s for a lot of us because of the extensive cloud cover. Temperatures will likely have a hard time getting out of the 50s tomorrow. Our next chance of rain actually arrives tomorrow night into Saturday. So if you want to get out and shop tomorrow, no rain issues, but we've got another rainmaker that will be moving in from the west over the next couple of days. This will provide some nice lift overhead and this storm system or this rainmaker is essentially going to move right over the area uh, during the day on Saturday. So 10 o'clock tomorrow rain is still west of the Rio Grande, but then while we're sleeping Friday night into early Saturday, some light scattered rain will start to develop. It will continue through midday Saturday, even into late afternoon, early evening. But notice by 5 p.m. if you're west of 35, things are starting to clear out. We've still got some rain off to the east of the interstate and then overnight Saturday into Sunday that rainmaker will move east and that will leave us with pleasant weather to end the weekend. So if you've got folks in town want to do some things outdoors, maybe try to fit those in Friday or Sunday because I do think that intermittent light rain on Saturday could be a little bit of a nuisance by early next week. Our afternoon highs are back in the 70s. Alrighty. Stephanie. All righty. All right. Thank you so much, Katie. Uh -huh. And just in case you missed it, that stuff coming up next. Get caught up. It's Thursday, November 25th. Happy Thanksgiving. So now let's talk about what this day is really about. Every year, the Meals on Wheels organization goes above and beyond to make sure that thousands enjoy a Thanksgiving meal. Around 300 carloads of people filled this parking lot getting ready for deliveries. Meals on Wheels. 73-year-old Constance King Meredith is one of the thousands of clients receiving a Thanksgiving meal this year from Meals on Wheels. She says the best thing anyone in her same shoes can do is to stay positive because there is always something to be thankful for. Thankful when I open my eyes this morning that 
God has allowed me to see another Thanksgiving. Military City USA just welcomed back a Thanksgiving tradition. It's called Operation Home Cooking. You know, it was canceled last year because of the pandemic, but this year only 300 homes were able to sponsor trainees. It scaled back, but everyone was still plenty grateful. More than 800 trainees from the Lackland Air Force Base got warm meals and their hosts were pretty happy too. I want to keep talking to them and feeding them and, and you know, just talking with them because they're just great people and they have their whole world ahead of them. Things kicked off into overdrive for the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner. This is the 42nd year for the event. More than 300 volunteers packed thousands of meals, which were then delivered with the help of Meals on Wheels. And it was a huge success because 12,500 meals wound up being delivered. Just being able to give back to the community, um, especially working downtown, you see a lot of homeless and people in need, so it's good to be able to drive away from work today knowing that we actually fed everybody down here today. All right, cool and a mainly gray day tomorrow. Rain returns Friday night and for most of the day Saturday. A nice day on Sunday to finish up the weekend. Stephanie? Let's just spend the rest of the weekend being grateful. I'm grateful for you and for welcoming me to such an awesome city. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you on the night beat.